Talking Tales is an intergenerational oral history project which is working with a group of eight young people over a year and a group of adults who've joined us for um, a particular phase in the project and essentially it's about collecting oral histories connected to the history of theatre in Keswick over the last 50 years. The project came about through lots of ideas. I had all sorts of ideas about oral history and reminiscence and storytelling and that was a particular interest of mine and I wanted to try and develop a project with young people that involved those elements but also included media elements as well. The history of the theatre has been marked in lots of different ways. There's a lot of narrative that's connected to the history of theatre in Keswick but there's no oral record and obviously with a keen interest in oral history and journalism and sound recording. I wanted to bring all of those together to create this project, Talking Tales. It would have been very easy to say that we've engaged with the community through myself going out and doing interviews and kind of ticking off the number of oral histories that we said that we'd collect, which is up to 50 but I wanted to do it in just a more participatory way. I'm a practitioner, I work with young people and I work in the community, so I wanted to involve those aspects as much as possible in this oral history project. So the project takes place over about 12 months, so we've been working together with a group of young people since September 2013. It involves three different phases, effectively. So phase one was working purely with that group of dedicated young people who decided they wanted to volunteer and commit to the project for a whole year. And it's been very much about building skills. So teaching them about interviewing skills, looking into journalism, making podcasts, sound recording, sound editing, and making it really, really fun and engaging so that they can use the tools to be able to then later collect the oral histories. Phase two sort of looked more into the element of oral history and what oral history is and why it's important within a community. And then we started to work intergenerationally. So on a weekly basis, I was bringing that young people's group together with the same number of adults. And we've been exploring all sorts of different creative ways of getting to know each other. And then at the end of that process, we've been working together over a number of weeks and those young people have interviewed the adults about the development of theatre in Keswick. And phase three is essentially bringing all of that together, all of the work that we've done already and consolidating it. So the young people have been working towards their Silver Arts Award, which is a nationally recognised qualification, which allows young people to practice arts leadership and raise their development and knowledge of arts in general. So they will be putting together and finishing off their portfolios for the Arts Award, and then we'll be working towards creating the final work for the exhibition which is to be hosted at Theatre by the Lake at the end of July. Yeah, it's good when you actually produce something, like you're not just doing exercises, and I think we're good when you've actually got like a finished piece of work. We are doing this to contribute as well to something called an Arts Award. I definitely think it will be very good to have something to show on your CV. And of course, prior to coming here, I did not know that the Arts Award was a thing. So I was very pleasantly surprised. I've learnt what a, a good job is being done for these young people. Jen and, and the rest of the education people are doing an amazing job, I think. Youngsters are ups, often criticise the old people and old people often criticise young people. And for this, this has got us really working together and talking together and that's been really, really good. I think more of that that can happen, the better. I've found the groups to be extremely dynamic. Their, their skills and their interests are really, really different, which has been really exciting and really challenging at the same time. I think both the young people's group and the adult group are all um, extreme individuals and bringing them all together in one space has been 
a really, really interesting process. And I think everyone has been on some kind of journey. A lot of people have been taken out of their comfort zone, particularly with the illustration element of the project. But I think what's really nice is I've been along um, on that journey with them because working intergenerationally and delivering such a a big oral history project is something that's completely new to me too, so I've been taken out of my comfort zone as well. So I came into the Talking Tales project at the point where they were looking for an illustrator to follow the process and illustrate that. My arts practice is a collaborative practice, so I very rarely work from my own concepts. I really like to work in collaboration and work with other people to see what their ideas are and develop a concept with them. So knowing that I'm going to work with some participants, I begin a process by getting to know them and doing exercises that are to get to know their ideas before I would pin down styles or, or definite concepts. And what, I, what I've come up with so far is a sort of graphic novel style but I'm also going to put them into posters from each era, so there's going to be a set of five posters, but they'll have within them these little stories in a very simple, clean style, based on the stories I've been told during those sessions. I think the hope was in bringing in a visual artist or an illustrator into the process was to give a completely different side to it. You know, you usually get just you know oral histories on their own with maybe an explanatory panel. But I think it was just to try something different, to combine that with a, an illustrative understanding of those oral histories. So it's to try something different, but also it was actually to, to, to have a different art form coming in for those workshops, for those people to get to know each other. It actually challenged people, and which they did comment on, but then they really got into it. So I think it was, yeah, to kind of innovate or try new practice and also create a different outcome. And it will, I think it will go forward as a different, an example of a different way you could present an oral history by combining it with a different art form. I think one of the key elements of the project for me has been about giving those young people ownership of the project. Um, obviously I've laid lots of foundations and created a structure around it but it's about trying to be flexible and giving those young people the flexibility to be able to be creative and to get to know those adults in their own way and be able to interview them in their own way. So the end product is very much an experiment. So we might not end up with the most polished oral history, but to me, it's about the process that they've gone through in order to achieve what we have achieved. One of the things I have enjoyed the most is just working intergenerationally with, with that group. It's been quite mad and chaotic at times and I didn't realise sort of 16 people in a space how much noise we would make and how much chaos we would create, creative chaos. I have enjoyed quite a lot just generally meeting the people here. The people here are very nice, they're cheerful, they're happy to be doing it. It's quite a small, tight-knit group, which I work very well in. I've enjoyed being with the youngsters. I've been most impressed in, in the way they have um, blended with us because the age difference is quite enormous. And I quite enjoy the games that we played early on. I couldn't really see the point of them to start with. I thought, I came here to be interviewed. <laughs> then, because I realised we were just getting to know each other, so it was easier to have conversations. I did, I did like going out and just asking people questions. I felt that I could ask people all sorts of questions and, um, and pester members of the public, and I actually had an excuse. Uh, I've really enjoyed going and visiting the theatre because I'm doing drama as one of my GCSEs, and it's always been a passion of mine. Like, you don't really get to go to the theatre that often, and it was free. And, yeah, the productions are really good at Kazakh. A pleasant surprise uh, to do the artwork. I mean, I'd never touched a pastel since I was at primary school, I don't think. And so to actually play around with pastels um, was um, a bit of a revelation. <laughs> I have learned to be more open, to be able to talk to people a lot easier, and it's something I just couldn't do before. I suppose I've learned to take risks in a way with doing the, the drawing and the painting work and it's made me think about what I do at the theatre and 
what I've really enjoyed and why I like being there. And it just, it sort of emphasised the pride I have in the place. I think fostering an interest in theatre in a very broad sense is tremendously important. I also think it's, it, it, it's incredibly valuable for the generations to mix. But I think it's good to pass these ideas on to the youngsters because really they have no idea how, how the theatre came into being. They have now. And just the wider aspect of the project, being able to gain an insight into what makes people tick and why they volunteered for so long. Some of them have been volunteering for 30, 40 years and I'm so intrigued to know what keeps them going and what keeps them really passionate about theatre but about this building as well and just kind of gaining an insight into that legacy and um, that's something I've really really enjoyed. So we've been working together for nearly a year and it feels like it's all going to come together and the final culmination point of the project is going to be two exhibitions which are being hosted at the theatre. So you've got the sessions that I've been delivering on a weekly basis. You've got the oral histories that we're collecting, which is a combination of factual and emotional information. And then you've got archival material as well. So bringing it together in an exhibition, I just hope that we'll be able to reflect all the people's input, but also some of the key events that have occurred over the last 50 years of theatre in Keswick and having not done a lot of preparation for exhibitions before, it is a totally new thing for me. So I hope I can do it justice as well. And I just want it to look really professional um, and I want it to be able to reflect everybody that we have involved as part of the Talking Tales project. Mm -hmm. absolutely fantastic. Uh, we've had our final celebration and it really has felt like that and I think one of the key things I'm particularly uh, pleased about is um, at the timeline behind me. People have been referring to it as a social document and that it's really captured the history of theatre in Keswick which is exactly what I wanted it to do. I think it's marvellous, I really do. I had no concept at all of what the final um, piece of work was going to be and um, I'm very pleasantly surprised. I think it's, I think it's wonderful. Um, it's really good it's really good how they've um, summed up the whole project it's shown what a good experience it's been. I'm just so sorry it is, it is finished. I wish we could go on and do something else because it's been wonderful doing it uh, and working with Jen. The exhibition's great. I love the um, illustrations done by Celia upstairs. I also think it's very educational but not in a sort of shove it down your throat way. People are going to be coming in, but not going to know much about this, and I just think it's really sort of user-friendly. Yeah. Oh yes, I'm very pleased how it's turned out. I'm glad some things haven't appeared. But <laughs> I'm glad our our pastels aren't on show. <laughs> and something that you do again? Oh yes, I'm very happy to do anything like this again. Yes, indeed. We ought to do another, <laughs> some other aspect of the theatre. Yeah, we should. Yeah, I think an awful lot of people. I can be very proud of what's happened, and I think perhaps especially it's the, it's the young people, yeah, who inspired people like me. Or you, you, you've done it all, you've seen it all, and yet these these youngsters have come along and fired us up once more. It's the whole experience has been very, very worthwhile, very good. <laughs> <laughs>